I was asked to talk about the clinical approaches for pancreatic cancer. One of the issues with the pancreas is its location, and it makes a lot of the things that we do to the pancreas and for the pancreas very difficult, because it's quite difficult to get at under normal circumstances. So this is a schematic diagram, and as most of you know, the pancreas is really tucked deep, 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 deep behind the stomach, and so it's quite difficult to get to. And when we're looking at um, the tools that we have to diagnose pancreatic cancer in the initial stages, and we'll get into issues of earlier diagnosis and early diagnosis later on, we're currently reliant on these, the CA19-9, still a workhorse, but not a great workhorse, some radiology imaging studies, which I'll go through and make some comments about, and then my world, which is really endoscopic imaging with ERCP and endoscopic ultrasound. The CA19-9 blood marker, it really lacks both sensitivity and specificity, and this is really what the issue is. And sensitivity, when we talk about it, is the ability to find something if it's there. And so 80%... It's a, it's a high number, but it's not a great number. You'd like it to be 100%. You'd like it to be 96, 97, 98%. And the problem is, is that it's not very good for small tumors. So not only is it overall not very sensitive, but it really falls down in those small tumors that you want to pick up early. It also lacks 100% specificity, meaning that it's elevated in other conditions. We often see patients who come in and they're obstructed because of their pancreatic tumor and their CA99 level is through the roof. It's like in tens of thousands. And when we do an ERCP and change the stent, the CA19-9 comes down to within normal limits. So that's not really it functioning as a marker of the tumor. So it lacks specificity. And these are really the two hallmarks of any good early detection marker that we're ever going to try and uh, identify. This is often one of the first tests that's done uh, in the evaluation of someone suspected of having a pancreatic neoplasm, a patient presenting with jaundice, and it's a regular abdominal ultrasound. This actually shows the mass. The problem with this is, as I said to you before, um, the pancreas is located deep, and there's a lot of bowel with air above it, and so it's actually quite hard to image the pancreas using this. So often, this, this particular type of uh, imaging study is normal, or it gives very imprecise or inadequate results. And so then we're forced to move on to do other studies. And so one of the great workhorses and, and, a, and a, t a test that really has been dramatic changes in over the last 10 or 15 years is a regular CT scan. And we like our patients to get what's called either a pancreatic protocol CT scan or the insurance companies will some, sometimes call it a CT angiogram. And this is really the difference. This could be and probably is a CT scan of a pancreatic uh, sus uh, suspected mass done with a regular conventional CT scan. And who knows what's going on there, to be quite honest with you. But when the pancreatic protocol CT scan is in a special scan that's designed for the pancreas, for picking up small lesions in the pancreas, for looking at the blood vessels around the pancreas, when that's done, all of a sudden, a mass is identified. An MRI scan is a similar sort of story, and there's less radiation issues involved. To the trained eye, the same questions can be asked and answered as can a regular CT scan. We hear a lot about PET CT scans, and PET CT scans are really the combination of two studies. One is a regular CAT scan or CT scan, and the other is a PET scan. PET stands for positron uh, emission tomography. And in this particular study, what happens is an agent is given through the veins, and it gets trapped in metabolic, highly metabolic cells. And as it gets trapped, it gets uh, imaged, and so it lights up. So these are areas that are lighting up. And this is the agent that's been given through the vein getting trapped. And it's a very attractive test, and it's very useful in a variety of diseases. And this is an endoscopic, or an ERCP. And ERCP stands for endoscopic retrograde cholangio, meaning bile duct and pancreatography, meaning uh, the pancreas, or getting access to the pancreas. It requires special equipment, and these cameras are passed deep down into that area where we can get, get close to the pancreas down beyond your stomach. 